AI has made it such a fun time to be a tech investor, in my opinion. On today's episode, I want to take a closer look at the four tech giants, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Google, aka Alphabet, and some of the recent AI announcements that they have made in the past week or so. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. All right, so let's start off with Microsoft. I do want to say my favorite one is going to be Amazon and maybe Meta, but let's start off with Microsoft here. So the first one is Microsoft here. We can see on April 20th, they are introducing Copilot in Microsoft Viva. If you haven't heard of Viva, that's okay. This is more of like an enterprise uh, business software solution but it, they're kind of adding generative AI, a new way to boost employee engagement and performance. So just like they're adding Copilot to a lot of their consumer products, to a lot of their office suite, they're also starting to add more of their kind of AI generative solutions to some of their other enterprise markets. And here we can see how they're doing that with Microsoft Viva. Kind of entering or moving on to another part of news from Microsoft on April 17th, of 2023 so uh earlier this week it seems microsoft and epic expand their strategic collaboration with integration of azure's open ai service so for those that are not familiar epic is a company that develops um ehr which is electronic health record software so they're using this ai power solutions to integrate it into that software and making it easier for just the overall health record market so we can see how ai generative is entering other solutions outside of just trendy tech we can also see it entering in boring stuff like electronic health records uh, so pretty cool there i think that's all i have for microsoft right now nothing too interesting in my opinion but let's change that up with meta so meta ai did announce on april 17th dino version 2 they do mention that meta ai has built dino v2 a new method for training high performance computer vision models and I think this is very important, right? Because we do know that vision is going to be very important for a lot of new technology and emerging technology like autonomous driving, like autonomous robotics in forms of the industrial market, but also in forms of like delivery and the consumer space. So here Meta has kind of created an open source of their model to kind of help improve uh, the training of computer vision models. So I think that's pretty cool and would like to see where things go from here. Maybe in the next Next year, in the next few months or in the next year, we're going to start to see more AI vision models opposed to just your text uh, LLM kind of applications coming out. So pretty interesting to see where this AI race is going to. And it's more than just language, right? It's going to go into visions and things that can incorporate that. Discover the world of semiconductors without getting lost in the technical jargon. My new membership offers a perfect balance for investors looking to understand this exciting market. Using my electrical engineering knowledge and experience, I will release weekly exclusive videos ranging from quick 5-minute 101s to in-depth analysis, covering not just popular chip stocks, but aiming to explore every public semiconductor. Plus, join a private community of like-minded investors. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Outside of that, this one's not too crazy, but it's just pretty cool. My um, Meta continues to kind of showcase ways that they you can be creative um, with AI. They did announce their data set for animating amateur drawings. So here you can kind of draw some random amateur pictures. I want to say some of these pictures are even better than, than, than what I can draw. Uh, so this is more than amateur, but you can see how just kind of creating this and then you'll be able to use some form of solutions to bring them to life. Uh, so pretty cool here to continue to see how Meta is continuing to revolutionize the AI market. Now into one of my favorite ones, Amazon. So Amazon, in my opinion, has been very, very quiet in the generative AI. I mean, we've done a few episodes in the past where we talked about some other solutions, but I feel like since April 13th, a little bit over a week ago, they did announce a lot of great solutions. Uh, for example, they did announce they have numerous chips that they're working with to kind of help with AI models. We all know Amazon has the Graviton, which is a CPU, an ARM-based CPU, that is meant to kind of provide the best price performance in their AWS service. But for those that are not familiar, they also have another chip called the Inferntia 2. 
And this is a machine learning chip that is meant for inference, right? So for inference portion of AI, they kind of talk about that and it's now available to general public who are using their AWS services. So I think that's amazing to see. Uh, they kind of gave us a quick paper here, but we can see how even the clouding giants are creating silicon to kind of optimize their AI workloads. And we can see this with the A AWS. In, in, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the name, but it's meant for inference instances. Um, they also did announce some other solutions that I have here. I think this was pretty cool. It, it's called Amazon's Code Whisperer, and it's kind of a co-pilot to helping you write code. Uh, it uses generative AI, uh, generative text AI and large language models to help you write the code. They kind of gave a pretty cool example here where you just kind of create a comment of what you want your function to do. And after that, you, you've kind of created the function. Um, the Code Whisperer actually writes that function down for you sometimes it's perfect sometimes maybe it, you you need to tweak it a little bit but it's a great way to kind of get into code creation uh so there are other competitors out there but amazon just announced their code whisperer i think that's pretty darn awesome and something i might play with later on outside of that amazon did kind of showcase this huge report i believe it was april april 13th right they did showcase one of those was the like i mentioned the um the inference chip in, inference chips uh but they also have chips that are meant for training of ai and they call them the trainium chips they announced those chips as well and what else did they do the code whisper that i just mentioned but more importantly the one a lot of people were talking about is bedrock and this is an easy way to kind of use their clouding solutions to build generative AI applications. Uh, there was a recent interview that really explains this. Uh, Amazon CEO Andy Jassy was most companies want to use these large language models, but the really good ones take billions of dollars to train and many years. Most companies don't want to go through that. So what they do is they want to work off the foundation of a model that's big e and great and already has the ability to customize it for their own purposes. And that's what Bedrock is. So Amazon's Bedrock is not really trying to compete against, for example, ChatGPT, but it's kind of giving those large language model already created and now allows developers to kind of make their own applications with it. So I think this is a pretty cool way to, and we're gonna, I believe because of things like this, we're gonna see a lot more AI applications within the next few months, even within the next few weeks. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so pretty interesting there. Now kind of let's push into Google, the final company we're gonna discuss. Nothing too much here. Uh, there are reports by Forbes that did come out earlier today, I believe. Uh, I believe it was Forbes, but, but we can see there's different outlets coming out with it that Google is also bringing code development, just like we saw with Code Whisperer, to their platform, Bard AI, right? So we can see how uh, one of the popular use cases for a lot of this text is code creation. Google is trying to make sure they're also into that with their AI Bard. Nothing too, too crazy. Um, code Whisperer, I did see some videos on YouTubers using it, and it's pretty, pretty amazing. I definitely want to see how AI Bard um, competes within that market as well. Outside of that, we're also hearing that Google um, has created Project Maggie uh, to kind of focus a little bit more on the AI search engine and combat against Bing's AI. Uh, so there were reports that that did appear. We still have to see that in action. We're gonna see where that happens, but that's also pretty cool with Project Maggie. The other thing that we saw, um, we saw this tweet from DeepMind that they announced that the DeepMind and the brain team from Google's research will become a new unit, Google DeepMind. So it seems like Google has a lot of great engineers, but they're split up into two main teams. They wanted to bring both those teams together, and I do believe that can overall help with their technological innovation. So pretty cool to see that. So I, that's all the AI news I have for you guys this week, and I think that's insane. This is stuff that's happened within the past 10 days. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know which company you guys are enjoying right now with this AI market. I do believe Meta is doing pretty cool stuff, but Amazon is one that shouldn't be slapped on. I think Amazon is looking pretty, pretty interesting right now with chips, with the software solutions, with the clouding solutions, and so much more. So take care, have a good day, and see you next time.